Ooh, hello there my fellow miners and crafters, good times, Oscar here, and welcome back to the wonderful worlds of Hermits and Crafting. In today's episode, we have our greatest challenge yet, and that is to terraform and lushify Rendo's beautiful lush mesa biome down here. And this is, like I said, our greatest challenge, and let's get started with this. So, as you can see, in our last live stream, we really started working on this zone of the area. So we've been getting this area absolutely beautiful with all sorts of wonderful trees, pathways, and details, small little water features, and yeah, I think this area is really, really, really coming out. But like I said, it is time to work on Ren's project. It is way overdue, and I don't think I'm going to take a payment or anything along those lines just because of how long it's taken me to get to this project. I don't think it's fair to make him pay for something that's been delayed for so very long, but I am so excited to get started with it. And let's take a look at our palette of materials. So we're going to be making some really kind of dirt and stone filled cliffs at the top. So at this area, we're going to add a bunch of dirt and stone to kind of really build up almost like a little bit of a berm. And then on top of that berm where we have our stone and our dirt and coarse dirt and pod so and all those wonderful things, we're going to add some birch trees. But these are very unique birch trees. These are reminiscent of the kind of fantasy forest design that we did for Tango's Keep. And we're going to have that style of tree but we're gonna be using the birch wood. So a little bit different than a scar pine that you'll see over here. So this is the scar pine design. So you'll see that uh, throughout the area, but this is going to be kind of a combination of the two to really make Rendog's, you know, beautiful lush Mesa, very unique and awesome. You know, look at his buildings. They look really cool. Like I've said before, I absolutely love the slopes of the roofs. They're very, very well done. And I think uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun, my friends. So let's get started. And the first thing we're going to start with is really building up that berm I talked about. The reason being is I think with Ren's base, I think it's gonna look spectacular to really kind of feel, not isolated, but just really feel like you're transported away from the Mesa into this whole new area. That's kind of the idea that I have here. And I think it's the same what we did at Tango's, how we transition out of the Mesa into its own unique area. And I think that's what Rendog wanted. And I think by building up these berms that we're gonna build here and then putting trees on top of them, once you're down in the valley, you're not gonna be able to see anything but all of Ren's beautiful structures and all of the other plant life and different things that he's been working so hard on down there. I think that'll look absolutely wonderful. So as you can see, just really simple. Um, there's not a lot to this particular thing, you know, trying to make a really kind of natural cliff side. It's really just kind of feeling it out and finding out what makes it look good, what doesn't. It's all really just trial and error, trial and error, and just following the lines. Never just start kind of going like three blocks up and then one block, just kind of follow lines. See, just create little lines and sways into the cliffs and eventually you'll find your way and be really happy with your design. And that's what we're gonna continue to do. So we're going to add a little coaster, a little grass, a little pot, so we'll and all sorts of other wonderful things. But first thing we need to do, we gotta build up this whole mound. And we are already running out of supplies, but I wanted to show you guys Scar's landscaping services vehicle. Look at me in there looking all wonderful. I absolutely love this thing. Gives me chuckles every time I see it. It's one of my favorite things on the server, just because I think it's funny. And uh, I think every time we do something, we're gonna park one of these trucks there. I think it'll be hilarious. Anyway, um, I've already run out of dirt, so this is going to be one big project. In all of my time, I have never seen so many mobs in my life, and I'm dead, and I'm sad. I lost all my levels, 70-something levels. I have never seen so many skeletons, so many creepers, and babies everywhere. Babies of all people trying to get my supplies back, and they're still here blowing up my landscape. I'm down to one heart. <laughs> I this is this is insane. I was shot by a skeleton using Soren. You killed me with my own bow, my flight bow, my prize bow. Look at this. Look at this. He's wearing my pants. He's wearing my pants. That one's got my bow. This is the worst. I have never seen anything like this before. <laughs> well, how can I get my stuff back? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh no. It's time to die, skeletons. I got my best bow. Got my best bow and I'm here to kill y'all. You're all going down now. The power of Scar. The power. Feel the power of this bow. All right, we got to put this bow. That's not going to give me any, any protection. But oh, you're wearing my hat, aren't you? Oh, you sneaky. You are sneaky. All right, let me get my supplies back. Look what they've done. In all of my time playing Minecraft, I have never been killed 
that many times in such a short period of time via skeletons. That is right. I was killed, what, four times and then one time by my own bow. How pathetic is that? Anyway, let's get straight back into it. And as you can see, we have this gigantic dirt mound. Now, of course, this isn't the final product. We're going to have all sorts of beautiful flowers, plants and everything up here. But what I want to start doing is laying out our trees. And that's kind of our main thing we're going to do here is use this section as a backdrop, a palette for the rest of the landscape. A lot of this is going to be in super fast uh, landscape mode. So stay tuned for that because that's going to be really awesome. So we're going to build up our first tree and we're going to build it up to about here. I'm going to build up this downward section here and like trees with this style. I usually like to do three, three blocks as a base starting point. So that's a good little tree tutorial for you. Don't say I never made my tree tutorial. Well, I will make one. It's just this isn't it, but it's a good starting point anyway. So as you can see, look at this. We've got that pretty well set up. And as you can see, we're setting up the trunk, which looks pretty nice. Um, it's always good to make sure your trunk is nice and well supported on the bottom. Make sure you have all the appropriate blocks and root systems and all of those wonderful things all arranged and ready to go because the tree well has to have somewhere to drink. There we go. And this is the point where we're going to start to add some leaves. So we're going to start about right there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to start adding a little skirt around the tree. And then from here, we just start going upwards, just getting a little skinnier, a little skinnier. And don't just go like one block here, two blocks, three blocks, and then do that all the way around. Really vary it up, but pick one side to be a little more prominent than the other, because usually trees are a little thicker and lean towards one direction, towards the sun, or maybe the winds pushed it in one direction or another. So this is my little bit more prominent. And if you're going to do some really crazy trees, like really bent over trees, think of a direction that the wind is coming from and then angle them trees to that particular spot. So think of like we're potentially we're well, you probably don't know, but I live in the Columbia River Gorge where it's very, very windy and all of the trees <laughs> lean towards one direction and that's the east winds. And uh, so all the little trees are all leaning towards one direction because, well, they're all getting pushed there um, a lot of the time of the year. So I think that'll be really cool. So as you can see, we're just building this up and I'll meet you at the top for some finishing tree details. And welcome back. And we're just putting the final blocks up here. Now, I haven't seen this from a distance, and that's the tricky part about building trees like this in survival is it's very difficult to get a good perspective from a distance. But before we look at that from a distance, watch this. Watch this. This is going to blow your minds. Bam. Look at that dynamic lighting. I was just playing around in the settings of Optifine, and I found this setting that says dynamic lighting. So I clicked on it, and it's kind of amazing. Watch this. Watch this. This is going to blow your minds. Well, actually, it's not there. This is going to blow your minds. Watch this. Look at that. Oh, isn't that really cool? How did I not know about this? Look at how it updates lighting in real time. <laughs> oh man, I kind of got excited. And after all this time playing Minecraft, I can still find like such cool little things that make me really excited. And that's kind of the beauty of this game is that uh, you can just continue to find amazing things about it that just makes you happy and enjoy playing it every single day. And we'll come back and look at our beautiful landscape we have down below. So let's fly in here on our runway. Awesome. All right, my friends, this is our berm and it is looking spectacular. As you can see, we're incorporating some of the designs that we have throughout the mesa and especially through the pathways. When I get some more hardened clay, I'm going to start, you know, putting more into the sides of the hill here. But as you can see, we crossed over, we transitioned into some different materials, some different greens, some different ways of doing it, more green, less brown. As you can see, trying to match as best we can to Ren's design down below. But I just love this little transition we have. And I think that came out really, really nice. And then down below here, look at this. Look at this. We've got some beautiful rock in the cliff. We have our trees above. And then as you can see, we just kind of, you know, stuck in a little bit of a cliff rock down there. And oh, cliff rock. That's kind of a cool name. Do we just coin that? If not, well, that's too bad because I coined it. Ha <laughs> ha. Cliff Rock. All right, we got some Cliff Rock. Can I name a dog Cliff Rock? Just sounds like a dog's name. I don't know. I'm just going off on a tangent here. Anyway, um, as you can see, look at that little rock builds out there, and you can see how the dirt's slowly eroding away. Um, but I do want to incorporate way more green into this side to match down below. Um, so it's still a work in progress there. But my friends, buckle up because we're about to hit super fast build mode, and complete, well, at least as much as we can. So let's hit it.
end of super fast landscaping mode and just take in all of the beauty. We're here in the camera account, really trying to just immerse ourselves in as much of this as we can. This was the largest project I think I've ever done for a single episode. Two days, over 12 hours of time-lapse footage. I think it came out absolutely amazing. Look at the cliffs here and just see the transition between the dirt, the rock, and into the mesa and the trees we've planted up on the tops. Every tree here has been custom built with every single block hand placed. It's just absolutely amazing. There's a lot of touch up work we still need to do. And I thought over here, of course we need a waterfall. It's a perfect location for a waterfall. But like I said, so much touch up work is still needed to be done in the area. But uh, I think it came out absolutely spectacular and I just really, really hope you guys enjoyed it. And there'll be a lot of streams and things of that nature really kind of cleaning this all up. And as you can see down here, we've even created kind of like a, a four-way intersection through the pathways. And eventually on this section over here, I want to add a little bit more of the mesa in this section just to make it feel a little bit more right with the world. Whereas within Ren's base, that is a completely separate biome from this. But I want this to still have that mesa feel to it. So look at this. Look at this absolutely beautiful waterways we've created throughout Tango's base. As you can see, we have some of the water rivers that flow through here, down into the waterfall, which eventually connect to a river. And then over here, this flows on down to this direction. Ah, oh, I just absolutely love it. Now, as you can see, there is still so much more work to be completed here. As you can see, the yellow pillars leading across the mesa. Now that will be a uh, live stream material, my friends. So definitely follow me on Twitch where you can be notified when I go live, when it is time to undertake that section of the project. But if you enjoyed this project and if you know a friend or something along those lines that might enjoy seeing something like this, definitely share with them. This project took, like I said, two days and uh, it was quite an experience. So I thank you guys so much for watching. And I really hope this inspired you for your own Minecraft landscaping builds. And until next time, this has been Good Times with Scar, and we'll see you later.